Egypt is an incredible place that's steeped in history, mythology, and lore. So it's no wonder that people are finding cool and interesting things there on a regular basis. But some of those things are really blowing people's minds. These are 20 amazing discoveries in Egypt that scare scientists. Number 20. Newly discovered tombs provide more evidence that slaves didn't build the pyramid. Back in 2010, some new tombs would be discovered in Giza in Egypt that made many Egyptologists have reason to believe that the pyramids may actually not have been built by the slaves. A chief archaeologist would make the statement to the effect that the newly uncovered tombs were those of workers that were responsible for building the pyramids. He reckoned that if they were slaves, and therefore without status, they would not have been permitted to have been buried beside the king's tomb. It stands to reason but is this evidence really going to undo everything that we've always understood about the pyramids? Probably not. Although the first of these workers' tombs were actually discovered in 1990, when a horse literally tripped over it, this theory had taken 20 years to be developed. During that time, he had continued to watch all the movies depicting slaves building the pyramids, all the textbooks carried on being filled with images and descriptions of this as a fact, and let's be honest, almost all the stuff that we think we understand from ancient times is based on the interpretation of different experts with the information available at the time. It'll take years of continuing research and additional evidence to change the narrative around the building of the pyramids, and it won't happen because one guy says it out loud to a few news reporters, even if he does think it's the most exciting and important discovery of all time. He would though now, wouldn't he? But what do you think? Is this a shocking discovery or just some new theory? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. What a man discovered in Egypt shocked the whole world, cat mummies. That's right, mummies out of cats. Now we knew that the ancient Egyptians worshipped cats, but this is a whole different level. Dozens of them would be found by a team of archaeologists accompanied by a bronze statue. Quite why so many mummified cats were buried together, nobody will know. As always, comment down below using the hashtag sweet topic and let me know your opinion in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19. Mummified babies found in Tutankhamun's tomb. The practice of burying dead pharaohs along with their pets and sometimes even their servants was relatively common. The general idea of the tomb was that it should contain everything that the pharaoh would need in the next life. This meant absolutely everything. And for a time, that also included the servants of the dead pharaoh, even if they were inconveniently not yet quite dead. This insane practice was eventually replaced with models of their servants. No doubt the idea was enthusiastic endorsed by the servants everywhere. What they did was they lifted the lids up and then they put in pieces of cloth. And so it should come as no huge surprise that the tomb of Tutankhamun contained mummies other than just the pharaoh himself. However, the fact that the mummies were tiny babies is a little bit more startling. When the tomb was uncovered in 1922, the pharaoh's two infant daughters would be discovered inside. It doesn't appear to have been as sinister as it may sound though. The children had died prior to their father's death. This super sad story is compounded by the fact that these babies have no known names. They're simply referred to as 317A and 317B. Number 18. Archaeologists claim discovery of the Library of Alexandria. What was believed to have been the greatest library of the ancient world, the Library of Alexandria, is a lost location with a mythical status. It was part of the research institute at Alexandria in Egypt and was one of the first examples of a library which was for the development of learning and sharing knowledge and ideas on a global scale. It would be built by Alexander the Great in 334 BC and the library acquired some of the greatest works of the ancient civilizations. What eventually happened to the huge and valuable collection at the library? All the roads 
once you entered the walls of the ancient city. Remains one of the most controversial and mystery shrouded things in history. There are accounts that the library existed until the Arab conquest of Alexandria in the 7th century, but others disagree. Some accounts have the library burning down by accident, whereas others have seen it destroyed in a deliberate act to wipe out all the remains of the old beliefs when Christianity was to become the only religion permitted in the Roman Empire. So it's no wonder that people can't even agree on where the place might have been located. But back in 2004, a team of Polish and Egyptian archaeologists claimed to have discovered the site of the original library of Alexandria, and then a whole new fuss and bother about the whereabouts and validity of claims would kick off again. These scholars of ancient stuff certainly enjoy a nice fresh controversy to mix things up a bit, probably on account of all their artifacts being well past their sell-by date. These scientists seem to have offered up very flaky evidence for their claims, and the furious arguments rumble on. Number 17. 2,500-year-old mummy in perfect condition revealed after discovery of 59 sarcophagi. Just when you think you've seen all the mummies that could possibly be discovered, they only go and crack open a new one, along with 58 of her friends, no less. Yes, in October of 2020, archaeologists in Egypt began opening up the ancient sarcophagi that had been discovered earlier that year at an excavation site just to the south of Cairo. And despite all the curses and all that stuff that could befall a person if they poke a mummy, <laughs> People just keep on opening these things up all willy-nilly. In fact, not only are people willing to open the coffins up, there are also plenty of people lining up to be there when they do. And that's what happened when these chaps pried open the old lid of the ancient death box that had remained sealed for 2,500 years. Does the phrase, rest in peace, not mean anything to these people? The first sarcophagus contained the mummified remains of a priest, which had apparently been sporting a rather fetching ensemble of an ornate burial cloth, along with a picture of the dead chap's face on it. How delightful! The mummy motherers were apparently thrilled to bits with the contents of these coffins and couldn't believe their good fortune. Let's just hope that lasts for them and no unfortunate accidents should befall them. Number 16. Secret Egyptian Palace of Ramses II Discovered by Accident even if people have been admiring a place and visiting it for decades, it turns out that there may still be secrets to be revealed. The Temple of Ramses II is one of the most famous landmarks of ancient Egypt and a tourism destination on the list of every visitor that goes there. but it had been keeping secrets this whole time. An excavation team from New York University were apparently out at the famous Temple of Ramses II in the ancient Egyptian city of Abydos when they accidentally found a secret palace, as one does, of course. Number 15. World's First Pregnant Egyptian Mummy Discovered an Egyptian mummy that was transported from Egypt to Poland in the early 1800s has recently undergone some new testing by a team of Polish scientists, and what they discovered was believed to be the world's first pregnant mummy. There are tasteless jokes to be made, but it's too heartbreaking to think of them all. The mummy dates back to the first century BC, and was, for many years anyways, believed to be the body of a male priest. However, modern scientific stuff pokes around where it's not previously possible, and using radiological scanning, the scientists at the National Museum of Warsaw then discovered that the mummy was not only a woman, but she was also about 28 weeks pregnant when she died. This just kinda makes me and my pet guinea pig Twinkle feel sad. Number 14. Oxyrhynchus papyri now, if you went poking around in ancient rubbish dumps back in the late 19th century, it seems as though you were still pretty likely to turn up something more exciting than a load of old broken pots. 
In fact, a couple of nosy old archaeology doers named Bernard Pin Grenfell and Arthur Surridge Hunt were rummaging around in one such vintage trash pile near a city in Egypt when they came across a whole bunch of manuscripts. There are estimated to be millions of documents, some of which are just tiny fragments, and although they have been in the process of transcription and conservation since 1898, there are still millions left to be examined. Rummaging in the rubbish dump proved to be fairly fruitful then. These manuscripts date from the 3rd century BC and the Roman era of Egyptian history, which was from 32 BC to the Muslim conquest of 640 AD. As exciting as all the pile of papers does seem, it was not the most illuminating section of writings that were mostly various kinds of public and private documents, like ancient tax returns and inventories, as well as some private letters, a few bits of literature work, and a whole heap of codes, edicts, and official correspondence. The stuff of everyday life, just really, really old. And perhaps these sorts of items are most valuable in offering historians a real look at life in ancient Egypt, more than the inscriptions on tombs where people are generally painted in their best light, these kinds of papers show how people lived and the boring minutia of daily life. Even the ancient Egyptians seemed to be into bureaucracy. Number 13. Archaeologists Discover Three Ancient Ptolemaic Rock Tombs in Egypt Wherever you turn in Egypt, it seems as if somebody's tripping over an ancient tomb or digging up some kind of relic. This stuff is absolutely everywhere. Even when you aren't looking for it, you can accidentally dig it up. That's what happened to this survey crew when they stumbled across a bunch of ancient tombs near Sohag in Egypt. There were apparently graves that ranged from the end of the Old Kingdom at around 2200 BC to the end of the Ptolemaic period in 30 BC. You can still put down a spade and come up with something. Several styles of tomb would be discovered. Some were carved into the mountain face, others were more like burial wells. The size and style of these tombs would suggest to archaeologists that they were the burial places of just ordinary people, as opposed to big grand finds that are usually the final resting place of kings. This find provided a lot of valuable information to historians about the daily life of the common person in the ancient world. Number 12. The Silver King Back in 1939, an archaeologist by the name of Pierre Montet excavated the tomb of a pharaoh who ruled Egypt 3,000 years ago. This pharaoh went by the fairly unpronounceable name of the first, and he was swiftly given a different moniker by the discovery team. As he was found to have been buried in a silver coffin, he would then be dubbed the Silver King. It stands to reason, right? The Silver King's burial chamber was in the city of Tanis on the Nile Delta, and he was buried in a coffin that was, as we know, made of silver and was sporting a super fancy gold burial mask. The tomb was also filled with a lot of other govins in the style of the other pharaoh's tombs, all the stuff that they would need for a jolly good old time in the afternoon. Afterlife. Unfortunately, this area is much more humid than other places in Egypt, so much of the ancient ephemera was a little for the worse for wear, but being thousands of years old, that's kind of to be expected, I would imagine. Number 11. The Lost Sunken City of Heracleon Back in the year 2000, divers would make an astonishing discovery in a bay off the coast of Egypt in the Mediterranean Sea. It was the lost city of Heracleon, also known as Thonis, which had laid underwater and undisturbed for more than 2,000 years. This legendary lost city has its origins as far back as the 12th century BC, which is an incredibly long time ago. It is really, really old and has many links to the other great civilizations of the era, ancient Greece. Archaeologists believe that the city was lost to the sea as a result of a combination of earthquakes and tsunamis, as well as the issue that we share in our modern world of rising sea levels. The great buildings of Heracleon were likely taken by the waters when the city experienced a great flood at around the end of the 2nd century BC. Many structures would have collapsed under the pressure of the water and 
Huge areas of the city were lost. It was believed that some residents may have stayed in the few remaining parts of the city during the Roman era and the early days of Arab rule, but it continued to disintegrate and was completely taken by the Mediterranean at the end of the 8th century AD. The remains of this once great city are currently located about one and a half miles off the coast, but as we experience our own rising waters, just how far out they'll end up is anyone's guess. Perhaps it's time to start building that boat. Number 10. Oldest Papyrus Discovered in 2550 BC, Diary of Merer. In 2013, an Egyptologist and his trusty team discovered the oldest papyrus that was ever found, apparently. So that's all rather exciting now, isn't it? This particular papyrus is an especially thrilling logbook by a chap known as Inspector Mirror, whose job was to transport limestone from a nearby quarry. But although this sounds a teeny bit on the boring side, it's actually an extremely revealing peep into the process of the building of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The limestone being accounted for was then transported to the construction site and was used as cladding on the pyramid itself. So it's no wonder that these archaeologists got their panties in a bunch and proclaimed this discovery the find of the 21st century when that century had barely even begun. Somewhat presumptuous, one might say. Number 9. Tomb of Tutu, 2,000-year-old grave containing mummified couple and animals discovered in Egypt. Well, frankly, if finding a tomb with a couple of mummies and some mummified animals is so amazing that it scares scientists, then I'm not quite sure what they expect when digging in Egypt. This tomb belonged to a dude named Tutu, who was some kind of important politician back along about 2,000 years ago. It's a fairly fancy old tomb with carvings and pharaonic scenes and decorations on the walls, and these show Tutu being given gifts by the pharaoh. processions of musicians and fancy people, and people cleaning the royal palace with Tutu riding a chariot. It's nothing too ostentatious then. He must have been such a humble guy, you know. Anyways, he was buried in his tomb along with his wife and a bunch of animals. Let's just hope that they let his wife die of natural causes before they mummified her. There was a period of time when servants were popped in the tombs of their masters so as to serve them in the afterlife, but the problem was that despite the servants, no doubt expressing that they weren't quite dead enough for that kind of thing, they were still packed off to do their eternal duty. I wonder if wives were offered the same package. Did Tutu get a twofer? Number 8. Valley of the Golden Mummies all this chat about curses and such may not be completely fair. Perhaps mummies get a bad rap. But there's no denying that some archaeological sites have had more than their fair share of mysterious deaths. This absolutely massive burial site is located in an oasis in Egypt's western desert and is believed to date from the Greco-Roman period, containing an astonishing number of mummies. So back in 1996, an Egyptian team of archaeologists uncovered approximately 250 mummies, which later turned into a crazy number as they continued to excavate. More than 10,000 in total, they could be dated back to around 2,000 years ago, representing one of the largest in intact recoveries of ancient Egyptian mummies in any single place. Most of them were still in pretty good condition, for mummies anyways, and they represented four different styles of burial. There were mummies which had a gilded mask that covered the face. The second was covered in drawings of scenes showing gods doing various exciting things. The third would be placed inside of a pottery coffin, and the final was simply covered with linen. And as always, objects had been placed alongside the deceased to help their next life begin with a bang. There were lots of different objects including jewelry, food trays, wine jars, and coins. The different kinds of burial are indicative of the wealth of the people during the era. Number 7. Lost Golden City of 3,000 Years Unearthed in Egypt the remains of an ancient city lost for almost 3,000 years is nothing to be sniffed at, and this city was golden, so it must have been a really good one. Now, everyone's always really quick to call any kind of find in Egypt the biggest discovery since Tutankhamun's tomb. Oh, what's that? Found a pair of old pharaoh pants, have you? The biggest discovery since Tutankhamun. 
dug up a mummy with a funny hat? The biggest discovery since old King Tut. Did you find Cleopatra's curling irons for a cat? Biggest discovery since King Tut. You know the drill. But on this occasion, those bragging about this one, they may have just had a point. In September of 2020, excavations would begin at the site between the temples of Amenhotep III and Ramses III near Luxor, about 300 miles south of Cairo. It would take a few weeks, but the archaeology team began to uncover brick buildings that seemed to go in every direction. What they were finding turned out to be the largest ancient city ever uncovered in Egypt. It had been in existence through the era of Amenhotep III and Tutankhamun, and was eventually lost under the sands of the desert. But this city also represents the golden age of the pharaohs, and there have been numerous important finds within the site. From jewelry to colorful pottery items, mud bricks with the seal of Amenhotep III pressed into them, and even scarab beetle amulets. After seven months of excavation, the site included several different neighborhoods and even a bakery with all of its pots and ovens still in place. As the excavation continues, the city continues to give up its secrets and show us just how life might have been over 2,000 years ago. Number 6 rare mummy that has a gold tongue. In a tomb that had never been opened, archaeologists would find something extremely unusual and just the tiniest bit creepy, unless of course you take your bling this seriously. The tomb would contain a mummy in a sarcophagus. So far, so regular. But then all the other accoutrements, like the canonic jars, the funerary figures, lots of pottery and whatnot, jewelry and such fair for the deceased afterlife enjoyment. The unusual thing, though, was beneath the mummy's mask. Concealed in its mouth was a golden tongue. The tongue, which is of gold foil, was included and placed inside the mouth so that they would be able to speak with Osiris, the god of the underworld. It seems kind of essential, but it's an extremely rare thing to find, especially intact and in a mummy's face that is still in good condition. Nothing at all creepy about any of this. It's all completely fine. I am not going to have dreams about this tonight at all. Number 5. Giant Finger Found in Egyptian Tomb Sometimes people really find weird stuff, and it simply defies all explanation, like this bizarre discovery back in 1988. Yes, these are apparently images of a giant finger. It is much bigger than the regular human finger, measuring about 15 inches long, but for Pete's sake, that's just too big to be a finger, isn't it? All the scientists can say is that this is impossible, and I'm inclined to believe them, but what exactly is it then? Some people are enjoying pondering the idea that in the long distant past, gigantic beings once roamed the Earth, but why is there no other evidence of giants anywhere else ever? Surely there would be big old giant bones getting dug up along with all the old other fossils, right? What do you think of this mammoth digit? Is this one of those Ripley's Believe It or Not things, or are we uncovering a whole new history about which we've been ignorant up until now? Let's have a flipping great Great discussion about it in the comments down below, shall we? Number 4. Statue of Samtik I Could Rewrite History Books While sometimes they find a lost city or a giant finger, other times the exciting part of a discovery is basically only really exciting to all the ancient history nerds who love to get new facts and go and write articles about them and have big chats with their nerdy little buddies. But good for them! It's nice to see people enjoying themselves. This discovery really comes down to the fact that prior to this particular statue turning up, experts in Egypt had believed that this guy, Samtik I, was a minor pharaoh, but this massive 26-foot-tall statue of him apparently means that he was probably a little bit more important than they first suspected. It is, after all, the biggest statue of a king from this late period of ancient Egypt. So, if it is of old Samtik, then those who historians will have to rewrite their books. Not quite the thrill ride of a golden city or some kind of weird appendage, but they've all found it utterly compelling indeed. Number 3. 3,000-year-old wooden feet of mummy discovered in an Egyptian tomb. 
Now, we all know that ancient Egypt was a fairly technologically advanced empire and they had some clever stuff going on, for those times anyway. I'm not even talking about jet engines or smartphones, but you know. This discovery was confirmation of some of those skills and that knowledge and how it would be used in everyday life back then. This 3,000-year-old mummy was uncovered at a gravesite in Egypt, and when she was alive, the woman wore a prosthetic big toe. The toe itself was fashioned from wood, but there's plenty plenty of evidence that it was carefully carved and then fitted and refitted several times, presumably to offer the wearer maximum comfort and the most natural look that could be obtained. The mummy was that of a priest's daughter, and her unusual prosthetic toe has been examined in great detail with the use of our own technology like microscopes, x-rays, and computer imaging. This clever thing has helped researchers to understand just how detailed that information can be to determine just how the toe was made. Isn't science very cool? Number 2. 2500 year old mummification workshop discovered in Saqqara. If you've ever learned anything about ancient Egypt in school, one of the first things you would likely encounter is that of the weird and distinctly graphic process of mummification of which the ancient Egyptians were so very fond of. Many a school child has the whole technique, especially the bit with the brains, you know, tattooed into their memories for all of time. And this is an archaeological site that could probably add some extra stuff to the wonderful imaginings of your own brain. Ew! The 2,500-year-old mummification workshop would be discovered in Saqqara near the ancient necropolis of the pyramid south of Cairo. In the workshop, they uncovered a collection of embalming gear, along with pottery vessels, bowls, and measuring cups. These findings are giving historians an opportunity to find out more about the oils that were used in the process. They were especially interested to learn about the chemical composition of the materials used, as this is one of the best preserved sites that's been discovered where this actually took place. Alongside the workshop, there are also additional burial chambers, which contain mummies that have remained untouched, and therefore unloved, since they were laid to rest. Again, more potential secrets are yet to be revealed. Number 1. 30 Ancient Coffins Found With Mummies Inside Let's wrap it up for now with a couple of cheesy mummy puns and yet more hordes of shriveled ancient corpses. We've had such fun today, now haven't we? The last one is about a whole bunch more coffins that were stuffed full of exciting mummies that were unearthed in 2019. It is truly amazing just how many mummies there still seem to be left to discover. It's almost every week that someone trips over another heap of ancient dead people. This party pack extravaganza of coffins was uncovered in Luxor after years of excavations by foreign-led teams when the dig was taken over by the Egyptian chief of archaeology. Then the earth would begin to give up their mummies, and they just kept on coming. These exceptionally well-preserved examples have given historians an insight into the way that a mummy is posed before the wrapping process. Apparently, if a body is that of a woman, she would have been placed with her hands open, whereas if it was a male mummy, the hands were balled into fists, presumably in case he needed to have a punch-up in the afterlife. Gosh, what a fun one. All those dead, wrinkly old bodies were quite unusual now, weren't they? Do you think they'll ever finish finding all those old buried things in Egypt? Then what will happen? What do you think of all this mad stuff they keep on digging up? Let me know your clever ideas in the comments section down below, because I'm bound to have got something wrong. Don't forget to point that out. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.